All right, so now we're moving from uh, descriptive di uh, analytics to diagnostic analytics. So in the previous videos, we were looking uh, at data to understand what happened. Now what we're going to do is we're going to dig a little deeper and manipulate the data a little bit more to uh, have a better understanding of why it happened. So this is uh, diagnostic analytics, and we're going to uh, show uh, using our script to conduct some diagnostic analytics. So again, we have at the top here, we have our um, initial comments about the, the script. And of course, we begin with setting our working directory. We will also uh, load tidyverse again. And we're going to load the uh, game data. Uh, read that from a CSV file and create that uh, game data uh, data frame. There we go. All right, so now, the, what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new data frame because we're going to investigate just part of the data. So rather than uh, data from 2000, excuse me, from 1990 all the way through 2019, we're going to just select a portion of that data. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new data frame and we're going to We'll call that uh, data frame modern data. And we're going to grab data from the uh, game data data frame uh, where the season is uh, greater than or equal to 2010 um, or less than 2020. So really what we're grabbing is the 2010 to 2019 seasons. So we're simply going to create a data frame from the uh, original game data data that is restricted just to those seasons. Control enter. And there we go. So. Uh, what we're going what we want to do next now is we're going to um, do some we're going to aggregate the data where we're going to um, take a look at attendance data um, per season and month. So for each season and month we're going to look at the average attendance um, across all of baseball. So this is going to be using the aggregate function. We're taking a look at just our modern data um, and looking for the attendance for each season uh, and month combination. Um, and we're get, grabbing that from the modern data and we're doing a mean. So when we do control enter, we have a new data frame, month attend. Take a look at that. And it has the modern data, um, the season, the month, and for that combination, it's providing the average attendance across all of baseball. But the, the column headers are pretty ugly, so let's rename those. So we're going to do this column name, uh, and we're going to um, change the names of the month attend data frame. Uh, we're going to uh, come up with new column names, season, no, month, and attendance, and we're going to assign that to the, um, to the month attendance data frame. Control Enter. And we can now look at this and much better. There we go. All right, so what we're going to do next is we want to look at that data frame, but we want to be able to uh, sort it differently. So let's let's sort it chronologically in a, in a manner, so in a kind of mix chronologically. We're going to take that uh, month attend data frame, and we're going to order the results so that it's first by descending season and then ascending month. So we'll first row or first observations should be the 2019 season and the month of March. So let's go ahead and execute that and take a look at the result. And there we go, 2019 March, and that was the attendance. So now we have them uh, in order of months by season. Okay. So what we can do next then is let's take a look at that data so, so that we can better understand um, which months had the highest average attendance. So they're already in order in that data frame, the month of 10 data frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, take a look at uh, the top 10 uh, months. All right. But that didn't work, did it? So we're, what we're doing is we, we wanted to see the, the top 10 months, but it's really showing the first um, rows of that data frame, or the first observations of that data frame. So what we need to do first is to uh, change the sort order. So rather than by sequential, we're going to sort them um, by the attendance field. 
right here, attendance field. So let's go ahead and go back and resort it. So we're going to go back to our month attend, order it by the descending attendance values. Control enter. And now, um, now if we re-executed this previous command, now we can see that they're sorted by uh, attendance. So now let's now that we can see that, let's take a look um, at the attendance in order by for the month of March. Um, the month of March would is typically the first uh, the first set of games uh, for the season, and there might be a lot of pent up excitement about uh, the attending baseball games, so we might see higher attendance there. So let's take a look at which months are um, what the attendance looks like for the top five marches over time. Control Enter. And we can see down here uh, that 2011, 12, 14, 13, and 18, those in, in that sequence, those were the attendance, uh, high attendance marks for the month of March. All right, so that's one way to, to break that data down. We looked at, uh, created data frames so that we could uh, discover the data by season and by month and look at attendance and sort, we sorted it by uh, different means. So next we're gonna move on to team data. So we're going to build a new data frame um, where we're going to uh, grab the team and season information from our, uh, our game data data frame. So we're creating a new data frame for, uh, called teams. And what we're going to do is we're going to have two uh, variables, team and season. And we're going to be getting the team from the game data data frame and grabbing the home team uh, variable. And then the season, going to go to the game data and grab the season variable. So when we hit control enter, we can see that we have a new teams database, but you can see that it's not just, um, we have the same number of observations as we did in our game data. That's because what we're seeing is we're, for every game, we're grabbing the home team and that season. So really it's just a subset of our of subset in terms of the number of variables. We're just grabbing two variables from that game data data frame. But what we want to do is to uh, come up with, du uh, remove all duplicates. So if we open up the team's data frame, what we're seeing here is uh, team and season. What we really want to see is just one instance, for example, Boston 1990, not for every time Boston 1990 appears. So that those are all a bunch of duplicate entries into that data frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that team's data frame and we're going to remove duplicates. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab only unique instances of the combination of team and season. So Boston 1990 will appear only once, and that should dramatically increase uh, the number of rows that we have in our team's data frame. So go ahead and control enter. All right, so now we're down to 878. That sounds better. So if we open that up, we can see Boston 1990, and if we scroll down to 1990, uh, we won't see anything down there in 1990 until we get to 1991, then we'll see, and then in 1990, we will see Boston again right there. So we we're, we're, have unique combinations of team and season. So go ahead and close that data frame. All right, so now what we want to do is we're going to, uh, we have now a data frame called teams, and that's going to be um, each of the teams for each of the seasons. So what we want to do is, using that data, we're going to um, come up with some aggregates. So what we want to do is we want to come up with the total number of runs that each team scored uh, for each of these seasons. Now if we go back to our original data, we can see that there is, excuse me, go over here, there's a home score and a visitor score. So that means what we have is we, we and our each team will be uh, the home team part of the time and the visiting team part of the time. So if we want to um, calculate the total number of runs per season, we really have to count the total number of runs uh, for that team when they were a visitor and the total of number of runs for that team when they were the home team and then combine those together. And that's what we're going to do here. So first, we're going to uh, create, uh, we're going to aggregate our data uh, where we're going to take a look at the visitor score and find, and we're going to sum, we're going to, as you can see here, we're going to total that score for each visit uh, team and season combination from the game data data. 
and that, from our game data data frame. And we're going to put that into a new data frame called runs. And then we'll go ahead and clean up our columns, team, season, visit, runs, and do the same thing for when they were the home team. So control enter here to create a data frame and go ahead and update the columns before I look at this. So here's our visit runs. So for each team, each season, this is the total number of runs that they've scored when they were the visiting team. Now let's do the same thing for home and then update our column names. And so we have home runs. Uh, so this is the team, season, and the total of run, runs that they scored when they were the home team. Okay, now what I need to be able to do is combine them together or merge them together. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our team's data frame, which we started, which is the combination of team and season, and we're going to add to that. We're going to merge that data frame with our home runs data frame, and we're going to say match these up by the team season combination. So we have team and season in both the team's data frame and our home runs data frame. So as those two are going to be equal, we're going to merge them together and grab the number of home runs. So if we hit control enter, take a look at our team's data frame now, and we can see then for each team season combination, there's the total number of home runs. Now let's do the same thing for visiting. So the visit runs, ran that, going to back, go back and we can see we have one more variable in our team's data frame. Open that up and there we go, total visit runs. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to create a new column called total runs in our team's data frame. And that's going to be equal to the total home runs plus the total visit runs. And that's going to be placed into the total runs uh, variable. Control enter. We have one more variable created. And here we go, total runs, visit runs. And you can see that the home runs plus the visit runs is equal to the total runs. But now we don't need these home and, and visit runs. We can go ahead and remove those. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to um, remove, and what we can do is we can just set, set that column equal to null is in effect how to delete that from our data frame. So we're going to remove the home runs uh, column by setting that to null and then doing the same thing for the visit runs. And now when we open back up our team uh, data frame, we see that we have the team, season, and the total of number of runs. So that's how we were able to, actually you know, one more thing, uh, we have these home runs and visit runs data frames. We really don't need those. Those were temporary to, that we needed to create those structures to come up with our total number of runs. So let's go ahead and clean those up. So what we do is we do the rm command, which is the short for room, remove, and then in parentheses it's the object that we want to remove or delete. So we're going to remove or delete the uh, home runs data frame and remove the visit runs data frame. There we go. So now we clean that up and we have our team's data and we can see for each t uh, team over that season how, what were their total number of runs. And so that would be something that if we wanted to better understand um, how teams performed in terms of uh, the number of runs over seasons, we'd be able to do that. Now we have the data to be able to do that. And let's take a look at that. We're going to um, display the top 10 uh, run seasons across all teams. So since uh, over this period of time, which teams had the most total runs? So first what we need to do is take that data frame and sort it. We're going to sort it by descending total runs. So we can see we're doing this order by negative team total runs. That means descending so that we'll get the highest number of runs first. So we control enter and then we can go back to our team's data frame. And there we go. We're seeing Cleveland uh, back in 1999 had 1,009 total runs and that was the highest during that time period. All right, so let's let's go ahead and see what were the top 10. So what we're going to do is just simply display them to our console. Uh, from the team's data frame, grab the first 10 rows in that data frame. Control enter. And we can see down here, these are the uh, the 10 uh, teams that had the highest number of total runs per in, a, in a single se uh, season. And there we go. All right. So now let's say we wanted, or we were more interested in the Minnesota Twins on how they performed um, during that this time period. So let's take a look at the top five run seasons for the Minnesota Twins. So we already have the data frame teams all sorted as we want as how we want them. 
So all we have to do now is grab the head, and we're going to grab the first five rows in that in that heading, uh, where or which the team name is equal to, and that's the two equal signs, is equal to quote Minnesota. Um, and we have that closing uh, comma there before our bracket. So we're filtering out. We're going to look at only uh, only results where the team name is equal to MIN. And we're going to grab the five first five that come up in order so that we're going to show the, the Twins' best season uh, and then uh, progressively down from there. So the first five observations. Control Enter. And there we go. So then, and not surprising, the uh, 2019 season, the Twins scored 939 runs. Uh, second best is back in 1996, the Twins scored 877 runs, and then from there. So uh, using diagnostic analytics, we're able to dive deeper into our data to understand why things happened. And that's the purpose of diagnostic analytics, is to understand the why, answer the question, why did it happen? So we uh, did a couple different manipulations here with the data, and you saw that we did have to do some cleaning and some preparations in order to to execute some of our commands. So it's not always just simply executing commands. We have to work with the data, and that's part of that is really understanding the data. 